Okay, well, there's been a little bit of a time gap in this series, but we're going to go ahead and pick up where we left off. This time, I want to start talking about the core pages, just kind of give you a general rundown of the basic pages that you'll need to consider for your membership site. And then in the next video, we're actually going to go into WordPress, and we're going to start getting things set up. So let's go ahead and get started on this one. Okay, so before we start getting into WordPress and we start going into some of the details of getting your membership site put together, I just want to go over some of the core pages that you're probably going to need, uh, make a few comments on them, and kind of give you a bird's eye view of some of these things that your site's going to need in order to function as a typical membership site. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on that. First one, really, really obvious, and that's going to be the home page. Now, with the, the home page, it really depends on whether your membership is pretty much the entire thing or whether you've got a lot of other stuff going on in your membership site. So what I mean by that is in some cases, your homepage literally is basically a sales page for the membership. In other cases, the homepage serves as more of a a typical homepage where it captures the unique selling proposition, these types of things. And then maybe you have a separate sales page in order to actually sell the membership. Uh, so you got to make the judgment on that. You're obviously going to have a homepage. Everybody knows that. Uh, but you're going to, you might want to change what goes on your homepage in order to accommodate the membership that you're building. All right, next up, very, very common, about page. You obviously want to have one. It needs to go not only just into you and your bio. That's actually not the most important part. The most important part about your about page is actually what your site can do for the person reading it. All they want to know is what you can do for them, and you want to give them the quick elevator pitch on what your site is all about and what it can do and how it can make their life better. Um, the reason this is considered to be a core page is because so many people click on it, okay, when, when they first get there. And so don't, don't forget about it. Don't understate it. It is a really common page for a reason. You also need to have the contact page. This part, every site pretty much has one. Uh, we'll talk about the mechanics of this later because it's not really just membership site specific. Uh, but when you do run it on a membership site, you might want to have some things on there. For example, if you have a contact form, it's nice to have the name and email pre-filled if the person happens to be logged in. That's really easy to do. You might even want to have a few FAQ type items in order to handle common questions that might come up for your members. All right, now let's get into some actual member stuff. Let's talk about login. All right, now with the login, there's a few different ways you can go about doing this, and we'll talk more about it uh, moving forward. But the simplest way is just to let the typical WordPress login screen be the login screen that everybody uses. Okay, so when you go and you want you go to log in to WP Admin, you have the login. Okay, it's a little little box. It sits there in the middle. You usually have the WordPress logo above it. Now, that is actually the simplest version of the login, and I think that it's usually the easiest. I think that that's usually the best way to go. Now, obviously, you don't want the WordPress stuff up there, and you're probably going to want to brand this login screen, and there's various ways of doing that. We'll go into that later, but you can definitely brand it with your colors, with your logo, stuff like that. You don't have it make exactly look like WordPress. You're also going to want to change the URL of it so it's not the typical WordPress stuff, okay? But we'll go into that stuff a little bit later. Now, another option you could do is to literally create a page on your site to serve as a login, and then you put a login form on there. It's one way to go, it's just an extra step, and that's why I think the regular login is perfectly fine. Some people also, when they use WooCommerce, you have the My Account screen, okay? And if the person's not logged in and they try to go to that, it's going to give you a login by default. In fact, it'll have the login on one side and the registration on the other if you have that feature turned on. And so that's another way that you could do it. It's just to rely on, in this case, WooCommerce with the My Account screen. Or if you're using some other membership site plugin, it might have its own login. I The way that we're going to be building this I think the standard login screen is going to be perfectly fine and we will just brand it accordingly. All right, this one is optional and that's the log out screen. A lot of sites don't even have one. So what happens is if the person's on your site and they log out, what happens? Well, a lot of cases it just flips off to the home page or something like that, but you actually can have 
a log out redirect and take them to a special page. And that page will acknowledge that they've actually logged out so they know that it just happened. But you can also use it as an opportunity to show them the latest content, like a post grid that shows the latest blog post or latest content from the membership if you want. You could also put some type of an offer on there, some type of a order bump on there that maybe they go, oh, I didn't know they had that. And so use it as a marketing opportunity if you're going to have a logout screen, but it's really easy to implement a logout screen. So it might be something you want to consider. All right, now every site, every site that has a membership needs to have some kind of a dashboard. And you can refer to this any way that you want, but basically when they log in, this is where they're gonna go. It's like the main hub of anybody who's logged into your website. And so you have different ways of going about this member dashboard, but the dashboard is really usually gonna be where people can navigate to the different things that their membership has. It could be a way to get to their account. It could be a way to get to the courses that they may have purchased. It could be to, to just branch off to anything that they are able to do as a member. You wanna put it on the dashboard. Now, there's two typical ways that I like to do this. Uh, one is my favorite, and I'll go over that in a minute. But the first is just simply to make a page. Just make a page like you would make any other page on your site and just put what you want on there, okay? Just put like, have a course grid on there for the courses they purchased, um, have a link to my account, like whatever makes sense for your membership, just build a page and put it on there, okay? The other thing that you, the other option you could do here is to use the WooCommerce My Account screen, but turn that into the dashboard. This is what I like to do myself because the My Account screen has these different navigation items for getting to different parts of their account and all that. And it's all very customizable. And so one of the things you could do is take the, the core My Account screen, which actually is their dashboard, and you could put your own custom content on there uh, so that you're basically just utilizing the WooCommerce My Account screen as the dashboard. It's nice and clean, and we can go over the details of that a little later. All right, next up. We kind of were just talking about the My Account screen, but this uh, is, especially in WooCommerce, it's pretty core to the way WooCommerce works. It's where they can see their order history. They can see their dashboard, of course. They can go to log out. They can change their account details. If they're on a subscription plan, they can view their active subscriptions and they can control that subscription. Um, these are all things under my account, but you can actually extend the my account area to go to other areas of your site and function as a full on dashboard. Now, if you're using some other membership site plugin there, it, it's probably going to have its own account area. And, uh, this is an area you want to pay a little bit of attention to because pretty much all of your members are going to go there. And so you want to make sure that it's nice and easy to use and branches them off to the things that they need access to. All right, next up is a course library. Now again, this depends a lot on whether you're gonna have online courses in your membership. Not all of them do, okay? And so, but if you're gonna be having online courses, online training content, you're gonna wanna have basically a course dashboard, a place where they go where they can view all of the courses. And with LearnDash specifically, you know, you build all these courses in there, but then you need to have a central place where people can go and find them. And so what I usually do is just create a page on my site, and then I use the LearnDash course grid, which is an additional plugin that you could get from LearnDash, and you install that. And then it's just a, a Gutenberg block, basically, and Elementor or whatever you're using would be able to bring it in as well. And you just build a course grid there that lists out all of your courses and that's your course library. It's nice and easy, but for your members, you want to make sure that this is a page that they can find very easily. Okay. Next up are sales pages. This part kind of goes without saying, but it needs it's it is core pages. If you're selling a membership, you need to have a sales page for it. You want to have sales pages for any offers that you make, and it is something that you're going to be definitely paying attention to. You're going to there are a little aspect of mechanics associated with it because you need to make sure that it has working add to cart buttons and that type of thing. And we'll talk more about that stuff later. Okay. Next up is registration. Now, again, this one depends on the nature of the site because obviously people need to get user accounts to access your membership. However, if the only way 
for them to have a membership is to buy something. Well, the way they're going to get the account is by buying something. And so they, if they buy something through WooCommerce, they're going to get the account by going through a checkout screen. Okay. If, if you're using some other membership site plugin, it'll take care of creating the account. So really the only time you really need a registration screen specifically is if you are giving people free memberships for some reason. Okay. And in that case, you would have a form, like a place to go to register, and you would put a form on there for them to create a free account. Now, just as a general note here, uh, WordPress does have an option in, in general settings to have the, uh, the registration turned on. I highly recommend that you turn that off because there's not a whole lot of control over the incoming traffic and you're going to probably have a bunch of spam bots and all that kind of crap, and I wouldn't recommend it. So what I recommend instead is to use a forms plugin. In my case, I like Fluent Forms, but almost any good forms plugin can do this. But use a forms plugin to create your user registration form and have it create the user profile for you. You get a lot more control over that user registration. Uh, you can ask for additional data. When, when they get into your database, you can map that data to where you want. You can add certain tags to the profile. You have a lot more control over the process. You can also put proper spam constraints on that to make sure you don't get a bunch of bots filling it out, uh, like putting on, uh, you know, a recapture type of setup and stuff like that. You know, get spam proofing a form is something that's kind of beyond this particular uh, series that we're doing here, but it's definitely something you were going to want to do. Okay. The last one I want to mention here is a general access denied page. Now, this is the page where if somebody tries to access something and they don't have access to it, this is what they're going to see, okay? And you want to put a little thought into what you put on this access denied page because you, you don't want to just kind of give them a big old, you know, and, and be really like uh, assaulting to them. What you want to do is have it serve as an invitation to join the membership. So treat it as a marketing opportunity because that's exactly what it is. Now, mechanically, you're probably going to have one default access denied page. And it will be the global redirect that, that no matter what they try to access across your site, they will end up going to this particular access denied page if they try to access something they can't get to, okay? The thing is, it can definitely be overridden on a case-by-case -case basis, and there are other ways that you can go about setting this type of stuff up. But I do recommend that you have one just default access denied page, and it'll be the default redirect. And then if we want, we can set up other options as we put the site together. All right, so next up, I think what we're going to do is we're going to pop into a Blink WordPress installation. We're going to start installing some plugins, getting a few of the mechanics of things put together. I'm trying to cover the big picture on some of this stuff right now because then some of the other videos coming up in the series are going to cover more specific details like login and logout and how to route people to a dashboard and things like that. So I'll see you on the next video.